Now, tomorrow is RTX Diabetes Awareness Day, which coincides with World Diabetes Day. It's a day dedicated to learning about diabetes and with millions of people facing daily challenges to manage their diabetes, we wanted to expand the campaign for the entire month of November with the Mission Possible Challenge. And today we have three great subject matter experts who will share ways to prevent type 2 diabetes, manage it, or even possibly reverse it. Amber Langford is from the RTX Virtual Fitness Center. She has a passion for helping individuals develop tools for improving their health and fitness. She specializes in injury prevention and functional movement. You may have seen her on Zoom many times as she leads a lot of our virtual fitness classes. Sejal Desai is from Premise Health and is a practicing physician's assistant with 19 years of experience. She is passionate about health and wellness and has a certification in lifestyle medicine. Sejal believes that spending time in nature is the best medicine, and I have to agree with her on that one. And last but not least, we have Janelle Finnerty from Uris Dining. She enjoys breaking science down to the nuts and bolts of practical advice. As a professionally trained chef, her passion is to make science taste delicious. You may have seen her on site at one of our many Eurist Dining Cafes. Now we don't have much time today, so let's get started. Sejal, we're gonna start with you. For people who have a family history of developing diabetes, is there anything they can do to prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes? Well, Andy, in fact, there is. And I think it's really important to highlight the uh, diabetes prevention program study that was done in the late 90s. That's the foundation for many uh, studies that show that lifestyle changes can impact blood sugar. Um, this study showed that those participants, and there were about 3,200 of them, that were randomized to the lifestyle change group uh, that were able to, on goal, lose about 7% of body weight through calorie reduction and increase exercise to 150 minutes a week were able to lower their chances of developing diabetes by almost 60%. And this was compared to the medication group, uh, which while it can delay the onset of diabetes, uh, is less effective. So this group of participants actually uh, did receive standard diet and exercise information, but were taking the metformin pill, 850 milligrams twice a day. And in those participants, uh, the actual uh, rate of developing diabetes uh, was only, their, their chances were less uh, or less impactful, I guess I should say, in terms of developing diabetes than those that did the lifestyle changes. So while 60% uh, lowered their chances of developing diabetes in the first group, that number was only 30% in the medication group. And then finally, we know that delaying uh, diabetes and the onset of diabetes by at least four years can significantly reduce the chances of something like a stroke or a heart attack and even decrease your risk of mortality. So yes, delaying diabetes definitely uh, has a benefit in those who have a family history. And then certainly there are options to reverse diabetes. Um, and those take a little bit longer in terms of uh, uh, seeing those results, but effective nutrition therapy and weight loss measures can help to reverse diabetes as well. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, thank you, Sajel. That is great to hear. Um, I think I heard you say that 150 minutes of exercise uh, was part of that lifestyle uh, requirement, so to speak, for those um, to be able to see those changes and, and prevent that. Maybe, Amber, you can uh, tell us a little bit more about 
the types of exercises that um, or types of exercise programs that have shown to be beneficial for blood sugar control. Absolutely. So high intensity interval training or HIT has been shown to be beneficial for blood sugar control. HIT consists of short intermittent bouts of vigorous activity followed by rest or low activity periods. Some examples of vigorous activity include running, jumping, cycling, and strength training exercises. For someone who is new to exercise or new to HIT, it is recommended that they start with a one to four or a one to two ratio. This means that if the work phase is one minute, then the rest phase will be four minutes for a one to four ratio or two minutes for a one to two ratio. For an intermediate fitness level, it is recommended that they start with a one to two or a one to one ratio. And then lastly, for an advanced fitness level, it's recommended that they start with a one to one or a two to one ratio. Those that are familiar with HIT may have heard of Tabata and Tabata is a good example of a two to one ratio with 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest. There are many benefits to including HIIT workouts in your routine. HIIT can improve blood pressure, improve insulin sensitivity, which then allows the body to utilize blood glucose more effectively, and then improve blood glucose levels. It can also improve cardiovascular health. And for those who have limited time to work out, HIIT is very time efficient compared to most workout protocols. Thank you, Amber. And Speaking of those blood sugar levels, for those who do have diabetes, when, um, when is it recommended to monitor blood sugar levels while working out? Yes, so diabetes and exercise can pose some unique challenges. To safely exercise, some individuals with diabetes may need to track their blood sugar before, during, and after physical activity. Monitoring the levels shows how the body responds to exercise, and it can help prevent blood sugar swings. If you do take insulin or any other medicines that can cause low blood sugar, it is recommended that you test your blood sugar about 15 to 30 minutes before exercising to make sure that it's at a healthy level for exercise. During exercise, low blood sugar is sometimes a concern. So if you're planning a long workout, you wanna make sure that you check your blood sugar every 30 minutes. This is also key if you're trying a new activity or you're increasing the intensity or length of your workout. Checking every half hour tells you if your blood sugar level is stable, rising, or falling. That way you can get a sense of whether it's safe to continue exercising. You should also check your blood sugar as soon as you finish exercising and then check it again throughout the next few hours. It should be noted that the harder your workout is, the more intense it is, the longer it will affect your blood sugar. Thank you, Amber. Now, Janelle, this next question is for you. Do you have any recommendations for what I should be eating or drinking before or after a workout? Oh, I think you're on mute, Janelle. Wow, thank you, Andy. I was. I have a lot of recommendations I'd love to share. Um, first, I'd like to just go over in general healthy snack options. Um, it's a combination in particular of carbohydrate and protein. The carbohydrate is used to energize your body, and the protein is used to provide essential nutrients to prime your muscles and set them up. Uh, so think about a normal meal, perhaps at lunch, right? Uh, no, a normal balanced meal. Uh, and you maybe have a plan to work out later in the day. And hours are going by and it's maybe it's been about four hours and you're feeling a little bit hungry, but you're probably not going to work out uh, for about another hour or so. It would be wise to have a snack, um, a healthy, in general, a healthy snack 
is a complex carbohydrate, and I will break down the types of carbohydrates and um, going in a in a minute. But just to it, to think about the snack as a whole, a complex carbohydrate and a moderate protein, and that looks like whole grain crackers, for example, with the fiber. Um, and the low fat options are also important. You don't want to overwhelm your body with too much fiber or too much fat because that'll stay in your stomach longer and it could cause cramping. So a, a decent, um, a small handful of crackers, uh, string cheese, for instance, uh, maybe a half a piece of fruit would be an example, um, something to have about an hour before you work out. However, if you're about to work out within 30 minutes or so, it's important to think about the type of carbohydrate. And here we go for a simple carbohydrate because they're fast acting. They release uh, the blood sugar quickly so they can help support the blood sugar and prime your body with those calories it needs. And something that is simple to digest would be graham crackers, a couple fig newtons, or dried fruit, for example. And that's a great one because you can keep it in your bag uh, so it's always there for you, uh, but also fruit. I love fruit jerky. I think that's a, a great product and um, it is something that you can buy and it's just like a regular jerky stick. It's just 100% fruit and it's dried um, and it's something you can throw in your bag and it'll stay good for quite a while. So that's another option for a simple carbohydrate. And again, that's when you're looking at that workout to happen relatively soon. So you want that quick acting carbohydrate. Um, Post-workout is, is a little bit different. You need more protein and some complex carbohydrate. Um, so you're looking at a little bit more of a significant um, snack, especially very important to note that if you're having a high intense workout or like a HIIT workout, like Amber was describing, um, you need to adequately uh, support those muscles and, and uh, refuel those muscles. So having a little bit more protein upwards of about like 15 grams to 20 grams is great. And you want to have that within one hour. Again, that's the type of exercise that's really intense, like um, playing a round of soccer, a racquetball, um, that's going to be where you're looking or hit training. That's where you you really do want to fuel up right away. Otherwise, if you are going to be having a meal in an hour or so, it's really not that important. If you had a normal workout, um, maybe it lasted 45, 60 minutes, you don't necessarily have to have a high protein right away snack. Um, it's really when the intensity is up a notch and you're really going at it pretty hard. Uh, so very important to note that as Amber uh, mentioned, it's uh, you wanna be checking your blood sugars. Uh, anything less than 100 milligrams per deciliter, you want to snack right away. It's too low to support a good workout. So very important to check. Under 100, you wanna give yourself some carbohydrate. You also wanna carry fast-acting carbohydrates with you during, you should just put it in, a, in your bag or always have it available because you can have sudden lows. Um, so you wanna have something that'll be able to bring up your blood sugar right away. And that's something like glucose tabs, gummies, crushed hard candies like crushed lifesavers for example or juice um, these are some examples that you should always have with you and always good to talk to your doctor about your medications certain medications can when you're taking them bring that blood sugar to a uh, low pretty quickly when you're exercising so again monitoring your blood sugars very important if it's under 100 have a carbohydrate snack now, the type of workout and the length of it, the amount of carbohydrate and the length of your workout is also important. So if you check your blood sugar and you note that it's between 100 to 150 milligrams per deciliter, here's where you want to think about what you should be doing. So if your exercise is going to be about 30 minutes and it's in that range, a small carbohydrate snack would be a good idea. If it's gonna be longer, upwards to an hour, 
that's where a 15 to 30 gram snack will be um, helpful and hopefully energize your body for a really great workout and prevent that low following your workout or during your workout. Uh, anything longer, like two hours plus, you do want to think about a significant carbohydrate snack plus protein. If your blood sugars are above 150 but under 200, no snack is necessary if you're having a moderately short workout. If it's 60 minutes, that's where a small carbohydrate snack could be very helpful. And if it's two hours or more, you need to check your blood sugar on the hour and eat about 15 grams of carbohydrate. And you're probably wondering, what does 15 grams of carbohydrate look like? And what does 30 grams of carbohydrate look like? So that's what I would like to review now. A 15 gram carbohydrate snack is typical of one exchange. It's one carbohydrate exchange. And it is about a medium piece of fruit or half of a banana or a handful of, of grapes, um, provided they're not gigantic. I have lately seen very large grapes. Um, so I would say 10 to 15 grapes would be about a serving of 15 grams of carbohydrate. Um, it could be about a half a cup of cooked cereal or a very small granola bar. 30 grams is just it'd be double that, or it would be an example, half a bagel, um, one medium banana, one large piece of fruit, or a cup of cooked um, oatmeal or cereal. Now, types of carbohydrate are also important. There are refined carbohydrates, those that are stripped of fiber, um, and they will break down very quickly, and so your blood sugar can go up faster. So we refer to those as simple refined carbohydrates. Um, and again, they can be helpful if you're trying to pick up your blood sugar quickly, but normally we try to refrain from eating them and they are not considered complex. Complex um, carbohydrates are those carbohydrates that have the grain intact or more fiber combined with them. And they're going to digest, you're going to digest those slowly. So they're considered slow acting and they do help provide for a steady blood sugar so you can see during um, long trainings, you want something with a little bit more complex carbohydrate, certainly fueling before your workout, um, as long as you have time to digest adequately before your workout. Um, so I hope that helps describe the carbohydrates and give some idea of timing, length of exercise, and the types of snacks involved. Yeah, thank you, Janelle, for breaking that down for us. That was very helpful. Uh, Sajal, let's move on to you. Uh, maybe you could go over what resources RTX has to support employees with prediabetes or diabetes. Sure, Andy. Um, RTX has a wealth of resources available. Uh, one of them uh, is the Lab Core Health Coaching Program. Uh, basically, uh, you will be linked with a wellness coach to help uh, meet your needs and goals with regards to your elevated blood glucose. Uh, Verda is another uh, vendor that RTX has, which RTX employees uh, have access to or are eligible for if they if they are. Uh, pre-diabetic, have type 2 diabetes, or have a body mass index over 27. And uh, again, this will be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, experience where uh, you will be given a glucometer, uh, a weight scale, uh, comprehensive nutrition counseling. And I understand that employees have had great success with this program. And then finally, we have the lovely RTX virtual fitness center, and we know that exercise is crucial uh, when it comes to metabolizing that blood glucose, and so, um, or, or I'm sorry, the ingested glucose, and so uh, there are a number of classes that are available through the RTX fitness center to employees to help kind of get that heart rate up and that metabolism going. Great. Thank you, Sejal, for sharing those three great resources. I would like to note that LabCorp and Verda are eligible or 
for eligible U.S. employees only. Um, and the virtual fitness center, however, is available to any employee. Uh, so Amber, maybe you can share a little bit more about the virtual fitness portal. Absolutely. So the virtual fitness portal is your access to fitness anywhere, anytime. All employees can register for the portal. We have the website listed there. It is rtx.motivationalliance.com. The fitness portal website is a free resource <laughs> and can be accessed on both work or personal devices. Within the fitness portal, employees can access a workout section. In this section, you can browse available workouts and workout programs to assign to your account, or you can use the section to log your own workouts. There is also a search tab in the workout section for those interested in locating our HIT workouts that I mentioned earlier. The fitness portal also includes live group exercise classes. These classes are available Monday through Friday from about 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Eastern on most days. In addition to these resources, employees can access a food log, which can be used to monitor your total calories and nutrients and help you keep on track with your nutrition goals. It can also be used to help you understand your eating habits. To access these resources from the homepage, you will navigate to the upper right hand corner and select more. This will then bring you to a drop down menu with all of our resources listed alphabetically. We've circled the food log workouts and the live workouts for you. Yes, thank you, Amber. And lots of messages going back and forth on the chat. Um, yes, Verda is available. Uh, they expanded the eligibility. Um, and yes, the live classes for the through the virtual fitness center are excellent. Um, and I'm going to have to give that food log a try for sure. Now, Janelle, uh, for those who are at sites with Uris Dining Services, what should they be looking for? Great. Well, you can look for our FIT options on our menu, and FIT is, it aligns with the dietary guidelines for Americans, so it's based on current research. So basically, FIT is going to be a lower calorie option that has less saturated fat, um, also lower sodium, less added sugar as well. So a lot of the things that, you know, you're probably looking to monitor are enrolled into the FIT criteria. So it is distinguished on menus with the FIT logo that you can see on your screen. Um, and um, we can also provide the FIT criteria in the cafe so you can get to know what those criteria are. Um, we also roll it into many of our promotions our Food with Purpose is our wellness and sustainability platform. And basically you'll find more plant-based foods, you'll find more whole grain options, leaner proteins um, rolled into our promotion. So for example, this month being November, we have a healthy holiday traditions that ran um, once earlier this November, but it's an example of we had really healthy side dishes um, because it's all about sides when it comes to Thanksgiving. So we did um, offer that as well, and, and uh, we had some fit in there. We had more vegetarian and vegan options as well. We also have brands that offer more better for you um, components in them. Um, things like Machu Peru um, is a great one, or Meze, which is more of the Mediterranean uh, features. And we have Babimbap, which is going to be like a Korean um, brown rice bowl. Those are delicious. Um, and earth bowls, which are some of my favorites. Um, so we do have plenty of options. And um, check out the menu and be on the lookout in particular looking for fit. I think those are some um, options for you. Hey, thank you, Janelle. I can't believe holidays are around the corner. And speaking of the holidays, uh, Sejal, what tips do you have for us for managing diabetes or our blood sugar levels during those family get-togethers? Sure, Andy. Well, I would say to you all to try to avoid skipping meals. I think it's a common misconception 
uh, that you should hold in all your hunger until that final holiday meal, but um, it'll actually help spikes that could occur after overeating and then dips earlier in the day if a person is taking medications. Um, and then additionally, uh, it's important to frequently check blood sugar levels. Uh, traveling across time zones can result in an alteration in eating patterns, um, which can really uh, disrupt blood glucose levels. I will say that there is this year for the first time uh, a continuous glucose monitor available over the counter and you don't need a prescription for it. Uh, wearables are sort of the hot thing right now and uh, this will actually feed uh, blood glucose numbers into your phone um, and it is not something um, that involves a blood stick. So um, definitely that is an option. The other caveat that I will add with regards to disruptions in blood glucose is not only the time change, but stress levels. So we know that there is a, an impact between uh, the mind and the body. And there are many studies that show that you know, the holidays are stressful for many folks and this results in a, a spike in blood glucose as well. So it's really important for uh, folks to just be aware that, that this can cause a disruption in glucose levels. And I do see a question regarding uh, whether, whether non-diabetics should check their glucose. And I don't think that's necessary unless you've been advised by your personal physician that you are pre-diabetic or diabetic. Thank you, Sejal. Amber, what, uh, what tips do you have for us? Yes, so for over the holidays, it is still important to include exercise in your routine. A few tips for staying on track this holiday season include plan ahead, make time for your workouts just as you make time for each of your festive gatherings, and put it on your calendar. Planning ahead by adding workouts to your schedule ensures that they will fit into your day. Go small. As your schedule fills with holiday activities, you might not always have enough time for a full workout. So don't be afraid to break it up into smaller durations. Stay accountable for including a workout, but allow for flexibility with the duration. Get a workout buddy. Even if it's just for the holiday season, having a workout partner can help you stay motivated. You're more likely to get to the gym if you have someone there waiting to work out with you. You can also sign up for a holiday race. Registering for a race keeps you accountable to your fitness goals and is another easy way to have some holiday fun with family and friends. And then lastly, log your food and fitness. Logging your nutrition and activity throughout the holidays to help you stay on track with your healthy goals is still just as important as it is outside of the holiday season. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. You got to love the turkey trots around Thanksgiving. They are a great way to get that movement in and you invite the family and you can all do it together. Now, Janelle, I know you have some tips for us and we are getting close on time and we'll keep going. If you need to drop off, we will be sending out the recording. Yes. Um, keeping hydrated, cannot say how important this is. Bring that water bottle with you. Get a water bottle that fits in your car, that fits in your bag. Bring it with you everywhere you go. This is number one, so important. Also, as, as Sajel mentioned, don't skip meals um, and eat close to your usual meal time. Don't get off track because that's where that blood sugar um, roller coaster starts taking over. So, you know, dips and highs and lows, you really want to try to manage that eating time. And if you are going to a party later, um, maybe you don't want to have that full dinner meal like at that have a snack that combines fiber and protein. Hunger crushing snack is going to be so helpful to help control blood sugar levels and keep that erratic um, blood sugar level, um, keep you from that erratic blood sugar level. So something like a few mandarin oranges, perhaps string cheese and some 
Triscuits or something like that would be an example. Cottage cheese, low-fat cottage cheese with raspberries and a handful of toasted nuts on top. Hunger-crushing snacks that are really going to be your friend and help glide you through. Um, also, bring a dish you can share. So important that you have something you can eat. If you're not sure what's going to be there, I definitely recommend bringing something you think you would enjoy as well as everyone else. Um, don't stand close to the food. It's probably sounds like common sense, but how often do we find ourselves doing that? So maybe just think to yourself about that and envision not standing so close to the food other than when it's time to choose your food. Um, that Those little things can actually make some big differences. Um, try using a smaller plate. That's always a, a gold standard um, and something that I find uh, very helpful. And finally, if you do drink, uh, be careful with alcohol. Trying to avoid sugary mixed type of alcohols like daiquiris and such. Um, better to have more of a simple, smaller amount of alcohol. Um, and also combining it with food will help to balance the blood sugars as well. So not to drink alcohol on an empty stomach. That can lead to problems and excess drinking can also lead to excess um, blood sugar levels um, later. So um, those are some tips to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Sajel. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Janelle. These are great tips. Um, like I said, time check. We're, we're running out of time. Janelle, maybe one final thought from you? Sure. Um, I think that the plate method is a great one. That's where half of your plate is non-starchy veg, a quarter is lean, a quarter is grain. This has gotten people through. This is a great way to go. Don't eliminate food groups. Um, gradual changes are the best and they will result in sustainable changes. And the gold standard is the Mediterranean diet. When we look at scores of research, that is the gold standard, especially with pre-diabetes. We've seen so much great um, help with that. So that it features seafood, it features lean proteins, it features healthy fats, whole grains, and plenty of fruits and vegetables. So check out more on the Mediterranean diet and you can see the screen here for more information as well. So thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for all sticking around. I will um, throw in, cause we didn't get to an uh, answering all of the questions, um, but if you have further questions, our lovely panelists uh, have their email addresses up there. You know what, I'm gonna throw them in the chat to make it easy for everyone. If you need to uh, copy that down. Um, and I appreciate, uh, everybody's time in joining today. Thank you so much, uh, for participating in the mis Mission Possible Challenge. Easy enough for me to say, take care and have a great day, everybody.